just the simplest thing is true. And unfortunately, it, it's just a family medical emergency. And like we said, we hope for the best. Uh, but I wanted to talk about the Saints coming into this segment because I, I was thinking over the weekend, Kat Terrell, more great work on The Athletic. She's breaking things down position by position. I've been thinking a lot about the Saints defensively. Offensively, we know what they're going to be. But when you look at the Saints defensively this year, it looks like they have a piece of the puzzle that they have not had. And I, well, I don't know quite how long. It's, it's, it, I mean, you go all the way back to like Jabari Greer, the time period when you had two corners that you were super happy with. By the way, it's been a long time since you've had two really solid cornerbacks in a Saints uniform. And Marshawn Lattimore has been excellent. But it seems like whoever has been opposite of him um, just hasn't gotten it done and has become a bit of a punchy bag. And then even pre Lattimore, right? When you look at stuff like uh, running Brandon Browner out there and and all the penalties that he incurred, and then Eli Apple last year, who I think was actually a bit better than people think, but still just was not good enough. Well, now the Saints believe that they fixed that with Janoris Jenkins, and Ked Terrell asked a very good question, which is like, how good? Can Janoris Jenkins and Marshawn Lattimore be? And Jenkins is such an interesting case because when you look at the raw numbers, you do get a little surprised. Like, okay, why did the Giants let this guy go? In 13 games last year with the Giants, 13 games, he had four picks, 14 pass deflections, and 54 tackles. Like, that's a really good stat line. It's a definite upgrade over Eli Apple. And then you come to find out, look, maybe there were some locker room issues, et cetera, et cetera. But, I like the Saints' ability, like the Patriots, to kind of bring in people who maybe have had a little drama in their past and, and, and get them to buy in to the locker room. I think that comes from great leadership. And when you look at the quality of the Saints' roster from a leadership perspective, be that Drew Brees, Demario Davis, Cam Jordan, like they have leaders for days. And it seemed like last year Jenkins really clicked. So if he does click and you don't have to deal with any of that off the field stuff, then all of a sudden you have two corners that feel very good about going one-on-one. And why that becomes so important is that frees you up defensively and frees up Dennis Allen to be hyper-aggressive. I mean, when you think about it, you can start dictating terms to the offense instead of having them dictated to you, instead of worrying about, okay, well, I'd like to get more aggressive and I would like to blitz here, but we have to be worried about covering up our most glaring weakness. If you throw that out the window, all of a sudden you can take on a bit more risk. And it, it, it's all the, you know, the, the cliches that you see in every aspect of your life. It's the risk versus reward balance there. And the Saints now, with these two great corners, they can be more risky, which in theory would lead to greater rewards eventually. And it's not going to work out every time. You're going to get burned sometimes. But on the whole, I think this is a huge upgrade. And when you look at corner now, I think it's a position of strength for the Saints, at least the starting. I think they still have major depth questions, right, when you look past that. Because P.J. Williams, Patrick Robinson, I just don't, I don't fully know what their role is. In the modern NFL, too, you're rarely just playing two corners, right? A lot of times you are playing nickel. So who could potentially play that slot corner? Initially, I think it would have answered P.J. Williams or Patrick Robinson. I mean, that's why you brought P. Rob in a couple of years ago, but it seems like they're kind of losing out now because we're entering the era of uh, positionless football, at least in this defensive secondary, where cornerback, Safety, I guess I should say, you know, slot corner and safety are becoming a bit interchangeable. And that slot corner position is kind of developing into a bit of a hybrid type of role. And so because of that, I think you have to look at C.J. Gardner-Johnson maybe being the favorite to play that position. Also, don't forget, you got the XFL leader in interceptions, Dietrich Nichols. And so he becomes interesting there. And so when you look between Lattimore... Jenkins, and then whoever wins ends up winning that slot corner position, which could be, and like like I said, if nothing else, at least there in P.J. Williams, P. Rob, Nichols, and Gardner Johnson, you have enough guys to throw against the wall that whoever sticks you know, could end up being pretty good. But all of a sudden, you have a Saints defense that looks very strong on the defensive line, especially if Sheldon Rankins can get back to his highest form that he was at before he tore his Achilles. Well, then you got Sheldon Rangers, you got David on Yamana, you got Marcus Davenport and Cam Jordan on the edges, Trey Hendrickson, who's a pretty consistent pass rusher, backing him up. 
Maybe you still add to it with a Griffin or a Clowney. You know, we'll wait and continue to watch those situations develop. And how about Marcus Davenport? Speaking of guys that could get themselves paid, look at what Miles Garrett just got paid. You want $100 million, Davenport? The path is there. Now, you just have to stay healthy, and you have to be able to produce a bit more than you have been. He's just been knocking on the door, but it seems like some injury or something keeps holding him back every time he's ready to break through. Well, this year, next year, if he gets double-digit sacks close to it, he'll be due a Miles Garrett type of payday. So defensive line, you look great. Secondary, right? I, 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 between Marcus Williams, Malcolm Jenkins, Gardner Johnson, and then everybody else we just mentioned, Jenkins and, uh, and Lattimore on the outside, I think that's a pretty solid group. All of a sudden, your weakest position group ends up being the linebacking core. And it's a testament to the Saints roster that your weakest position group would also feature a first-team all-pro player in Demario Davis. Now, that said, Davis is great. But outside of him, you still have injury and depth issues, right? And it's why Zach Bond out of Wisconsin is going to be so important for this New Orleans Saints team is because last year they were having to sign guys off the street. I, I don't even remember this. Do you remember Stephon Anthony coming back last year? I was kind of shocked to learn that he played for the Saints again down the stretch last season. You had Manti Teo signed off the street. Kiko Alonso before he tore his ACL. Caden Ellis hurt. Alex Anzalone hurt. I love Craig Robertson. Excellent leader. Excellent special teamer. You don't necessarily want him starting at linebacker. None of these guys exactly strike fear into the opponents. So Zach Bond has a huge opportunity to make an impact on this team. Also, I think you'd love to see Anzalone stay healthy to fulfill his some of his potential. And if you can, if that group can stay healthy and the cornerbacks as well, the Saints look like they have the makings of being a top 10 defense. And then you combine that with an offense that, like we've said, has entered a whole is greater than the sum of its parts type of scenario where an Emmanuel Sanders signing, well, that's pretty good for anybody on the surface. It's even better for the Saints because of the ways that they stress you. The same way that LSU last year could just run 11 personnel and and, and put those guys in any formation with, with Clyde and Moss and the big three receivers, the Saints can do something very similar this year. When you have Mike Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders on the outside, and you have Alvin Kamara as your playmaker in the backfield. You have Jared Cook, who Madden just rated as, was he in the top five or top seven? We'll have to look it up. Jared Cook had a really good rating. But anyway, and then you have Jared Cook at tight end. Like, how do you commit to stopping that offense, especially when Drew Brees is the one computing everything, analyzing everything, and figuring out where to go with the ball? And it, all, all this does, when you look at this roster right now and you think about Jenkins and Lattimore and everything else, it just constantly reminds you what a solid group the Saints have put together this year and what an important year it is for the Saints. COVID, no COVID, fans, no fans, whatever. Everything the Saints have been doing, everything Sean Payton and Drew Brees have been doing for the last 15 years has been leading to this moment. Ever since the bounty gate suspension and the decline, the seven and nine years, some really poor drafting, all of that negativity was used as harsh lessons learned. And that front office flipped the script. They started drafting incredible. They started making better, more frugal, more efficient free agent signing decisions. And, and they recommitted to protecting Drew Brees, to building around him. And instead of asking him to just make up for everything, they gave him some weapons. And now when you look, I think you're as well suited to win the Super Bowl as any team in the NFL, if not the outright favorite to win the Super Bowl. And if they're going to do that, a lot of it will require on that cor- or, or will, will land on that cornerback position. Can Janoris Jenkins step up and be that consistent cornerback opposite of Marshawn Lattimore? Because if he can, you have two guys that can go one-on-one, you free up that defense, and you could be talking about a Saints team that has a top-10 defense and a top-10 offense in the NFL. Uh, so exciting times for the black and gold. Coming up next, though, we'll keep it New Orleans as we welcome in my guy from the Locked On Pell. 